again, Robbo, girl, girls, I've produced for you again. I, this was, <laughs> no, what's he? Honestly, when we first started this, I put it out there. Who do you want to see? Did they want to see Gary Lyon? Did they want to see, you know, Stephen Tingay, David Schwartz? No, they wanted to see you, my friend. So how do you feel? <laughs> Oh, I'm honoured, Robbo. I really am honoured. I mean, why would they want to see those old has Yeah, yeah. You know, like, exactly <laughs> right, mate. Mate, I'm so pleased to see you wearing a beanie. You, it suits you. That the the blue and the red, mate. It suits you more than that other colour you had to wear for a little while. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's home, really, isn't it? It's um, you know, I was there for for ten years, and um, you know, over a ten year span, you sort of just become entrenched in yeah. in the club, as you as you well know, and. It's not just your, your your teammates and your coaches, and it's it's the entire club, isn't it? It's the you know what the fans go through, and the sponsors, and your player sponsors, and your, you know it's yeah. um, it is like a family. So well, uh, it, and it's I mean the same response really you get from most Melbourne you know players that I talk to either on this or you know wherever they'll say that the, there's this family, this extended family, but. You know, it, it's it's hard to quantify that, really, isn't it? So, like, you, it's acceptance. It's um, you know, you're trying to do something special, but then you meet this group of people that are so invested. H- how do you explain that emotion of of that family feeling? I, I, I know it's impossible to. You can just say, well, it's yeah. family, isn't it? But how do you put that into words to help people understand that that support, whether it be sponsors, whether it be player sponsors, mm. what does it actually mean to a player? Yeah, I think it's an interesting question, isn't it? I mean, it, I think it's almost easier now to look back, like mm. now that you're out of it. Um, you know, when you're when you're in in the game and you're playing and playing every week, you know, that's your sort of main focus. Yeah. Um, and you can get pretty tunnel vision, and and you know, like you're just focusing on playing good footy. But once you finish up, it's that's sort of like I've done a lot of reflecting recently. It's like you remember back to you know the Don McClarties and the you know, and, and their families taking you in and, mm. or, you know, um, so many of my mates, like after a big loss or something like that, and they're there for you mm. or you know, the fans that come up to you and they say, look, the joy that you brought on that this day four years ago, you know, blah, blah, mm. blah. And it's, it's um, you know, it's just a pretty special thing to have, you know, had the opportunity to be a part of on one side as a player and now as a, as a supporter and a fan and a, you know, a, a friend to a lot of these guys who are about to go out and play in a, a yeah. prelim. It's, um, you know, it's another sort of uh, stage, I guess, for me. And it's, it's um, for me, it's almost like I enjoy this one just as much, you know, being able to sit back and watch and enjoy it. Oh, that's awesome to hear that you like that too, because I look at you now and I think you could still play, you know, and a lot of supporters would think the same too, you know, we wish you were still at Melbourne, you know. <laughs> Who knows? You hadn't broken your leg. You'd be. Who knows what would have happened? You might have requested to trade back to Melbourne. And you'd be over in Perth at the moment. We won't. <laughs> let's not think like that. But, but you know, you 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 were there, and you know these guys, and they're going through something pretty special at the moment. You must be loving them, mate. We're about to watch this amazing game. How are you feeling? Yeah, it's um, it's just incredible. Like speaking with Gorney during the week, and you know, it's sort of it's like blows my mind really because I can remember when I was there and we were, you know, pretty average and um and you know, Gorney's this big lumbering sort of awkward bloke and and I see the other day that he's, you know, five time all Australian, um, best and fairest winner, captain of the all Australian team, and he's about to, you know, lead this club into a prelim and like, you know, we've been the best team all year and yeah. You know, we got the midfield that everyone's jealous of, and we got the big fella, and we got some young guns, and we got this incredible backline, and yeah, um, it's just it's just so exciting, you know. It's um, I, I just remember guys like Christian Petrarca and um, Angus Brayshaw, Clayton Oliver, these young kids, Jaden Hunt, Salo, like they all sort of got there maybe three or four or five years after me, mm. and you know we're coming in as these raw sort of you know little kids who were struggling to you know that doing their time in the vfl and trying to get up and get a game and then they'd struggle and they'd get dropped again and yeah. and now all of a sudden they're all just the best players in the whole league <laughs> in and, the and, universe at the moment <laughs> but um you know and clayton still you know like just gives me a call and a text every now and then he's just the same you know yeah. this kid who loves his footy loves his mates loves having a good time and but he's the best midfielder in the comp. Yeah. So it's, yeah. um, he's the know, qu- he's the quintessential guy to, to uh, 
make you realise that they're just ordinary blokes. You watch him play and you think this guy is a demigod. He can do it. He was everywhere. He gets how many handball receives is that now? He's awesome out of the middle of the ground. Then he talks and you're like, God, he's just an average bloke, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and and you know, that's the same as all of them, isn't it? Like yeah. they're all just, you know, the blokes that have grown up and gone gone through the journey and yeah. you know, now hopefully they can they can enjoy uh, the, the big success. So. Yeah, totally. And we'll all do it together. Now what's I want to talk about you, but first let's just talk about you mentioned that we're about to go out to a prelim game. It's fantastic. The success this year has been amazing. We've talked it up and we're living it. But there were some really ordinary times that we lived as well. And I was a part of that towards the end of my career, 07, 08, 09. It started to get really stinky. And then it got probably even worse still. In a uh, Probably in your prime at the Melbourne Football Club, you were dealing with stuff that no footballer really had to deal with, should have had to deal with in terms of a club setup and how bad it was. I mean, just some comments on that from you. I know you'll keep it, you know, above that. But, yeah. you know, I mean, honestly, how did it make you feel in reflection now that you were a part of a club that was pretty much a joke for a long time? Yeah, I mean, it's one thing you look back on and, and it's, um, you know, it's part of the journey. It is it is part of my career. And, I, you know, I guess it's, it's a frustrating thing to look back on, to yeah. think that, you know, for so many years, um, you know, just that opportunity of... Um, you know what these guys have got now like mm. just imagine having that opportunity and yes you know we you know we didn't help ourselves and you know it comes down to a lot of things you can't put it blame it on one thing but you know i just think we we weren't given the opportunity as you know in my sort of age group coming through at the melbourne footy club um we just weren't given the opportunity you know as you know they shipped off a lot of our experience they yep. got rid of all of our older guys who were you know they're meant to be there to protect the young guys and mm. you know shoulder the pressure load until these young kids are ready to go mm. um and it's sort of that's sort of one thing i was happy with with you know as i got a bit older with melbourne i sort of felt like we did give we as a sort of older player at the d's um just before i left you know we did give those young guys a pretty good opportunity to, mm. to become good players and to to, to play for a, a team that's up the top of the ladder and playing finals. So mm. that's sort of one thing that I take from it that I you know. But um, but personally, yeah, it's a it's a big portion of your career mm. where you're really you're sort of um, irrelevant really around yeah. the league and and um, you know I can remember going to a, a one of the Brownlow medals and just thinking like we didn't poll a single vote pretty much for the whole year and um you know all these other big clubs and, and they're no different to us and that, that was a frustrating thing they're all just the 46 blokes over there and there's yeah. 46 blokes on our team but you know because they've got you know some things organized a bit better than us and they've got a few things in place that are you know they've they've been able to develop their players and and have a really successful club and we we weren't able to mm. so mm. Um, but yeah it's um part of the journey and and um you know, I certainly learned a lot through mm. through those dark times, that's for sure. Well, you did, mate, and we know you copped a lot along the way as well. And I'm really pleased with that answer because I agree with everything that you said. You know, when I finished up my career in 2009, I felt like I needed to be there to, to, to you know, give that shield, be that shield for a Liam Jarrah type or even you, wherever you were playing, might have been the forward line. You know, to, mm. to, to, to cop the crap from everybody else as the older statesman, you know, and let you just do your thing like I got from Gary Lyon and David Schwartz and David Neitz, you know. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. And we don't want to go over it too much because we're enjoying what's happening now. But it is a reality, you know, and it is part of our life. So I was lucky I got some finals. You know, yeah. 2000 was sensational, 2002, 4, 5, you know, 98. But, but uh, towards the end there... It, it started to foul up pretty badly, didn't it? So, <laughs> but like, hey, we move on. I want to talk about you now, Jack, because I'm doing this. So I'm going backwards in time because I know you. You and I are playing in a basketball team together. <laughs> the fans don't know this yet. They, you might, they might know, but uh, you will find out after lockdown's gone because we're going for it, hammer and tongs, aren't we? Uh, what's he? We're playing a Monday night roster. We call the Bayside Bangers after. The man himself, uh, Rob Harvey, Banger Harvey, he plays in our team as well. We've got Pendles, we've got Jeremy Howe, we've got some superstars in our team of the AFL, and you are our number one pick again this year, mate. We, we got you in, and we got one game, and we're locked down. Oh. And we bloody lost, Robbo. What the hell? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you, you sort of almost uh, lifted us over the over oh. line in that game, hitting your three threes in the second half, bringing us back, and then... Yeah. Uh, 
I think big Benny Bullet sort of took the took the game winning shot with about thirty five seconds left when we finally got us back to one point down and yep. air ball went straight out of bounds and there's no <laughs> there's no clock stopping it um, Monday night. Game big, over. Uh, but it was fun, my friend. It was so much fun. And basketball is fun. So let's talk about that because your early uh, early Jack Watts days was basketball and football. I suppose probably more basketball because I'm doing it now with my uh, 10-year-old boy. Basketball is three times a week. There's a couple of training sessions a week. It's everything and everywhere. Footy is just, you know, play on the, on the Sunday and there's a, maybe a training session once a week. So you did that and you did it to a very high level. So tell me about your basketball journey. Yeah, um, I guess, as you said, basketball, as you're growing up and when you're young, um, it's 10 times more serious and more commitment than, than footy ever was for me. So, um, you know, it's funny, like I look back now as, as when you're old and you, you look back and I go, shit, my dad took me to every single session, every single game, every training, you know, like I was in this sort of VIS thing. And you, so we're getting up at 4.30, 5 a.m. and we're going in and training before school. Okay. Then he'd take me home, have a shower, cook me breakfast, take me to school, pick me up after school, take me out to training over there mm. in Ivanhoe or in bloody Templestowe, wherever, you know, and then Friday nights we're out to Geelong and we're playing out there. And uh. um, so, yeah, it's um, it was a big commitment, but it was my, it was my love, you know, like yeah. basketball for me was just um, – it was my first love, definitely. It was more, I was more into basketball than, than I ever was into footy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then it probably just got to a stage as I grew up a bit um, where footy sort of seemed like a, a viable reality yeah. um, to sort of make a pretty good living. And whereas basketball, it was it was still quite an unknown in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was either, you know, you're going to have to go overseas and, and play college and, and um you know and like back then it was sort of we didn't have paddy mills and della vadova like they would just get started but when i was 15 they weren't over in the nba yeah um well just to just to place this for people and i know this and you you probably won't want to say it but you were in a starting five for an australian team whatever age division it was and della vadova was a bench player and replacing you when you'd come off for a rest so that's how good jack watts (laughs) was ladies and gentlemen he could have he could have gone seriously gone on to do that. No, that's the truth. I know that's the truth. All right. And he, <laughs> but he chose football. And we're glad you did because we got a taste of the Jack Watts. But, um, you know, you did finally make that choice of football in the end. And then all of a sudden that goes really well for you. Okay. And I'm conscious of time because we've got to get to this game real soon and you've got to jump away. But you choose football and then you start doing that to a high degree as well. And then they start talking about number one draft pick. How did that make you feel? Um, oh, it made me feel great at the time. Mm. Um, it was amazing. Like, you know, and that's that's one thing I look back on. And I think, you know, yeah, my, my AFL career wasn't, um, you know, I'm not going in any Hall of Fame dinners or, or you know, like legends of any clubs or anything like that. But, um, you know, my childhood was something just special and, mm. um, you know, probably enabled me, you know, gave me the strength to, be able to get through the sort of controversy that I did with my, my footy career because, you know, I had such a strong base. I was, I was a very lucky kid. We won, you know, I won everything as a kid growing up. We mm. won the basketball tournaments, we won the basketball state titles, national titles. We mm. won, I won five grand finals in footy and, um, you know, it was just, a, I was very blessed and lucky. And um, so, yeah, when, when I started, I guess I played, I've made the, AIS bar, um, footy squad when I was 15, I think. Mm. And then coming into 16s, I broke my collarbone, so I didn't play that tournament. So mm. I was a bit of an unknown. Mm. And then um, I made the under-18 nationals bottom age in footy and then ended up having just a, a really great tournament. And um, I think I won the Lark medal, which is like the best player at the nationals and mm. as a bottom age kid. And, so from there, they, you know, it was sort of like he's right up there. Um, and Melbourne had num- pick one and then West Coast and Frio had two and three. So um, they sort of went with, you know, the Melbourne pick Melbourne and, and the WA boys pick the WA guys. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, but it was it was a great time in my life. I wouldn't change it for the world. Mm. Um, you know, it just uh, from that point on, it didn't quite click as, as well as... Uh, 
as what the childhood well had. you know and and you can argue there were great moments and and it did click but that, that first game i suppose everyone talks about i want to clear that up a little bit too because you got ragdolled in that first tackle that we've seen to it's been done to death or whatever but it, it's like that for every young kid coming in you get targeted a little bit i played on john walsh for my first game and he was kicking mach- at the back of my machines whatever you call me achilles every step yeah. i took you know so that's that's the sort of stuff you expect to cop, and and you would have just taken that on and run with it, yeah. I mean, yeah, every- that's right, yeah. exactly. I think the, the difference was not every kid had a press conference on the Wednesday and a media <laughs> conference on the Thursday, and a, you know yeah. we're unveiling this great white hope in yeah. the week before their first game. So, you know, got more press than anyone else ever did, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. but as you said, that would happen to every single young kid that comes in, plays their first game. You know, the opposition coach is going to say, "Oh, this kid," you know. Yeah. He's, let's not make it easy for it. Like, yeah, yeah. That's just what happens, isn't it? So, um, well, yeah, you let, let's talk about that because you brought it up because there was pressure there, uh, mm. unfair pressure. I didn't get any of that stuff before a game and no one should. You should be just sort of sliding in there under the radar, starting on the bench and just slipping on, you know, and no one really cares. But you didn't because you were the number one draft with the great white hope and, and your junior career sort of paid that way. And, and from there on, there was this... There was pressure. I felt it being mm. a player at the club. I felt the pressure for you. I was there, God, this guy's come along. He's going to save us all. And I might have even made it worse for you by saying, come on, mate, save us. Because <laughs> 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 we're not winning. But anyway, I, I do want to, that's a joke, but I, I do want to talk about that because how have you dealt with that over the over the journey? Because there's been a lot, a lot of pressure on you. Yeah, oh, there was. Um, and, you know, it's it's something that... Looking back, it was, uh, you know, there was some, some really tough times there. And, and um, you know, I think it certainly, um, you know, rattled me and my confidence a bit coming in. You know, um, no, no sort of first-year player should have to cop that. I think, I think it was sort of, you know, the position that the club was in. I think we were $6 million yep. worth of debt and, you know, we're losing every game. And, um, you know, so it was sort of like we need something mm. and let's – sort of plonk it on this kid. He's mm-hmm. a Melbourne kid. He's a number one draft pick. It's, you know, and so then it's almost like from that point on, it was um, it was just hard to win people over, even at the club or like when I say that, almost like every anything I did really well was like expected. Like yeah. that's what you're meant to do because if, if I played my best game of footy as a, you know, 18-year-old mm. and, I've you know, like it's like that's the standard. That's what you should do every week. And then, you know, when you're sort of not quite living up, it's like you're meant to be this gun and you're meant to blah, blah, blah. So that that was sort of the, the hardest thing for me I found was just mm. like, and I'm a, uh, you know, me, I'm a big softy. I'm, I like to keep, you know, people pleaser. I want to, yep. yep. I want everyone to like me. And, and, um, and so to have that sort of just hanging over me for a lot of my career, I felt. Oh. Um, and that was, all, you know, a big reason to leave Melbourne. It was sort of like, mm. Maybe I'll just go, I'll go to port and I'm there for pick 35 or whatever. And so then, you know, there's no real pressure, yeah. uh, which was which I really enjoyed, obviously. But well, you, I was going to say, you probably enjoyed that more than your Melbourne experience because of that. And I, I mean, I really want to get into that for a second and, and help the, the fans understand a little bit that are watching this. It's one thing to have the pressure of your own pressure to perform. You want to perform yourself, right? And so you've got all that on your shoulders. You've got your family and, you know, the expected sort of pressure that you get in your... But then Jack Watts has got the entire Melbourne world waiting for him to do something. Have you ever lined up to have a golf shot and no one's there and you scream it down the middle and you're like, yeah, I'm a pretty decent golfer. But then you're playing with your mates and all of a sudden two or three sort of uh, blokes walk up that are, and you just go to water, don't you? You <laughs> cry, you're like, oh, I don't want anybody watching my golf shot. That's what you had realistically all the time, everything you did, not just with games but training as well. So we're not sort of creating excuses here. Mm. Uh, people by by saying this this is actually something i feel because i know i was there uh, and i was a player well and i had my own pressures and this guy's got the whole melbourne world on his shoulders as well so i i'm i wanted to talk about that because you never have i don't think you really have ever have talked about it um mm. and and it's it's got to be something you've got to do to get on with your life as well as just talk about things yeah yeah no definitely and I, look I, I think i sort of you know i in times like that, you, you lean on your on your values and, and what means most to you, and that's where I sort of went to my friends and family, and 
um, you know, they were just incredible throughout that whole time. But it's it's still just frustrating. You know, you want to be the, the good player, the gun that's everyone's, you know, saying how good you are. And, yeah. and when, when you're losing by, you know, 15 goals every week and, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, it was it was pretty tough. So, yeah. but in, in saying that, you know, as I said earlier, it's, it's, it was a great learning curve and you learn who you are more in those times. Yeah. And I think when you, you know, you're out in front winning every game and it's all pretty easy. So I learned a lot about myself, about my friends, about who I, you know, wanted around me and, mm. um, and yeah, it's, um, well, you have more of a sense of self from that really tough time than you do from your, your junior career where you won everything and were given everything, you know, and it was all done for you. You learn more about yourself in those tough times. So in in all of that, you've learned your lessons and that's great and that's brilliant to see. You're still standing strong and tall and happy, you know, mm. from as far as I know anyway, because how do you really know somebody, but you're still standing tall and strong. So what advice do you give to people that are going through, because we're all going through tough times at the moment, all right? Mm. So here's someone that's been at the point of attack, you know. What mm. advice do you give to people right now? How do you stay strong? Is it family? Is it stay true to yourself? What is it? Oh, geez. I, I mean, for me, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's just being true to yourself. Um, you know, I know that for me, it was what I value is how I treat people, mm. um, you know, being a good person, being respectful, um, you know, and, and so for me, that's what I sort of lent on when footy wasn't going well, I was sort of like, well, I don't really care if I'm not that good at kicking a bloody pigskin around yeah. a green grass oval. Like I'd rather be a good person and, and, you know, have people that really know me and love me say that, geez, he's a generous guy and he's, you know, he's always there for me and I can trust him and I can, you know, blah, blah, blah. So mm-hmm. I think for me, that's sort of, that was how I handled those tough times. Um, I mean, today, you know, we're in lockdown 7.5,560 or whatever we are. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's, um, it's pretty tough. And, and I think like what I've been doing recently is just, you know, trying to um, stay in contact with as many people as I can, because yeah. um, as you said, like when, as you, when you talk about things, you might not even feel like you've solved anything or you've got it off, like you've worked it all out, but just talking about things with your mates, um, Mm. it just takes a whole lot of pressure off your shoulders, doesn't it? So it does. Yeah, mate. um, That's brilliant. Brilliantly, brilliantly put. And, and I've got to say, you know, you did something right when you're at Melbourne, because I think we all are very acutely aware of how bad Melbourne were at that time and the pressures that you had, but the way people still talk about you and still want you involved um at our club so don't don't hang back mate come forward when it all opens up and look at me mate i just push myself on everyone <laughs> remember me i'm robo remember me <laughs> you gotta talk mate you gotta put you gotta push your out because we're the same you and me we are people pleasers we are we do want to you know and i don't i had a pretty good time at the melbourne football club you had a rough time so i got because i sat back and watched your career mate because i was a supporter and i think you did it bloody well so good on you mate for me, good on you. <laughs> I appreciate it, brother. I appreciate it. We, the reason you can come in and sort of, you know, spruit yourself up is because you just used to sit on heads for a living and kick snags. <laughs> Didn't quite, uh, I never quite got to those sort of heights and, um, you know, so it's a bit easier for you. Uh, you know, Jeremy Howe watched from afar, learnt the craft and came over and took over, didn't he? That's <laughs> right. Exactly. Did that still hurt you a little bit yeah, now? Little bit. They talk about Jeremy Howe instead of Russell Robertson, the high flyer from Melbourne. Yeah, Noel. no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, um, post your career now, um, we, we, we touched on it before, uh, but but you, you, I'm glad to see you wearing that Connors run top. That's fantastic, mate. Showing the support. That's absolutely Go brilliant. Board. Everybody, going for a run after this. If you don't know what that's all about, make sure you jump on and Google it and, uh, and donate where you can. Uh, squash. Talk, that's been your passion for even while you're at Melbourne when you started that, mate. So talk to me about squash, the apparel. We'll give it a big plug here because you can get online and buy some of that as well, yeah? Yep, absolutely. We've actually just done a, a squash times Connor run um, short, which we're donating all proceeds to uh, to the RCDF, the Rob, Robert Connor Dawes Foundation. So um, jump on board and buy those. But yeah, squash is, um, it's just been a, a, something that um, me and my best mate, um, Adam Walsh, we grew up together and we started this business and then we brought on our designer who's another one of our best mates 
um, stubby turner and, um, yeah, just to, to have something um, to achieve something like that with two of your best mates. Um, yeah, it's, it's just been pretty special sort of ride. And, and now, you know, post footy, I'm able to, um, you know, I've got, I've got a, a job, I guess you could call it a job. I get to go in with my best mates and handle sales and talk to wholesalers and talk to our stores and, right. um, you know, try and create some connections and um, take the business forward. So yeah, jump on board, uh, squash.com.au. Yep. Um, go and buy the, the Connor short because, um, yeah, we want to we want to try and sell them out and, uh, and give as much money as possible to the foundation. So, um, yeah, it's good fun. Good on you, mate, 100%. Now, last before I let you go, we get to this game of football. Um, what's your best moment at the Melbourne Football Club? Not Port, Melbourne Football Club, not your career, Melbourne Football Club. I mean, I watched a little clip of you kicking that goal. Uh, was it against uh, Collingwood or was it Essendon at the end of the game there? Collingwood, I think, yeah. Collingwood game point. there. Super, super game that was where we get over the top. That was a sensational moment. Was that your, one of your best moments playing? Yeah, I think... I mean, I can't actually really remember that game, to be honest. I don't know how I really played, but you know, I guess everyone only remembers the last couple of minutes and, and that turned out pretty well, but... There was a few. I mean, a few of the um, Richmond games, early days when we were sort of, you know, felt like we were caught at a similar spot um, in terms of our development as a team and we were able to get over them a, a fair few times. And um, I just remember some of those games being the, the ones that I really enjoyed, you know. Mm. Um, they had a lot of young talent as well coming through. We had a lot of young talent. They were sort of, everyone was comparing us. So to to get the wood on those ones, like those Anzac Day Eve games yeah. where there's, you know, 70,000 there. It was, um, that was pretty special. Um, yeah. And then, I mean, I mean, I guess I really enjoyed like the whole Rusey era, mm. um, you know, just trying to turn the club around. And in the end, you know, I think we missed finals by 0. 0.4 of a tenth <laughs> or some crap, like lost to Collingwood in the final game. Yeah. And they weren't even a chance to play finals. And, you know, that would have been my first finals experience at a, on a big stage and, and I was playing, you know, my best footy I've ever played. And mm. So that was that was a bit of a heartbreaker. But just that whole era, like I remember kicking a goal against, uh, we were playing against Gold Coast and we're nearly getting done by Gold Coast and, and I kicked one late, I think, and kicked three or four for the day and, and got us over the line there. So that's, you know, a nice little memory to mm. have. And mm. um, yeah, yeah, it's, there's, there's plenty. I mean... Hard, it's hard looking back. Yeah. I, I barely remember much, to be honest. But. Yeah. Oh, we, we as Melbourne people can't go straight to it. Oh, that premiership that we won was the best moment, yeah. unfortunately, but maybe they'll get it this year. What about your toughest opponent, mate? Toughest opponent? Jeez, I remember playing against Geelong down down there with, you know, Matty Scarlett, Darren Milburn, Corey Enright, Andrew oh, Mack. Um, you know, just like this all-Australian half-back, full back line. Mm. Um, and I was like a 18, 19-year-old kid sort of not having any idea what I was doing. Um, I felt like I was almost just following them around the whole day, like trying to tag them and make sure they didn't get the ball and they were just running rings around us. <laughs> so that was pretty tough. Um, Dustin Fletcher, I remember early days. He was a bit of a hero of mine. Yeah. I just yeah. remember him being like, you think you've got him covered, and then all of a sudden the, the ball's just gone. Yeah, uh, he was he was um, he was hard to play against as well. He had those extender arms, didn't he? he just would get in mm. there at the last second with that, and just uh, sinewy as well. Could just run and jump and kick the ball. He was fantastic to play against and to watch as well. Well, see, that has been brilliant, mate. I've got to let you go. We, we, we've we got to get a... Obviously, we know who you're going to tip, but we're going to get a bit of a summation on what we're going to see tonight. What have yeah. they got to do to beat Geelong tonight? Yeah, it's... it's um, geez, I'm nervous about it, to be honest, far out. Like, Geelong have... You know, I guess they've come in and they probably don't have the expectation, you know, like, we're expected to win. Yeah. We've sort of dominated that final game of the season, you know, for the majority of it, if we didn't give them a 40-point head start or whatever it was. Mm. So, um, you know, I just hope they go out and, and play their game. I think we're, we're obviously we're going to see, you know, Jakey Lever and Maisie just dominating that, that back line and, and holding strong down there. You know, I hope we see Salo flying off half back and um, Hunty running with the ball and, um, you know, and then, and then just, just play their game. You know, I hope, I hope Petrarca and Brayshaw and Clayton and, you know, they, 
don't go into your shells and I'm sure they won't. They, they know what they're doing and they're, they're sort of high on confidence. So just, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing that. It's just, you know, it's that first time where I sort of feel like, you know, we're on a level playing field with your Selwoods and your Dangerfields, you yeah. know, like it, yeah. whenever I've watched them in their careers in the past, it's like, if Selwood's on their team, you're not going to get them done because yeah. you know, Joel Selwood's this animal and, yeah. uh, you know, he, he sort of brings the best out of his team. But looking at it now, it's like, well, yeah. Petrarca can go can go all over him. And, yeah. you know, they're obviously, like, he's getting to the end of his career and not moving as well as he used to and our boys are running on top of the ground and feeling good. So yeah. um, I think it's probably just going to be up in the head and, and um, if they can get that right, they'll um, they'll be fine. Well, I think this is the big one. They get this one done in the, yeah. the granny. The yeah. granny done. Oh, my God. Yeah, the, the confidence they'll get from a win from tonight can just steamroll. And who knows, the next few years, we, we dare to dream, Watsy. We dare to dream. Um, yeah. Mate, that's been absolutely brilliant. Uh, I wish you were the same age as me, mate. We would have come through at the same time. We would have had some success together. It would have been awesome. But unfortunately, I'm a bit older. I'm a bit too old. <laughs> but still, uh, still going all right, I reckon. I reckon I'm still I going all right. <laughs> I know you wanted to get that one. <laughs> you still look pretty good, mate. You're still shooting hoops very well. You're still uh, playing your tunes. You still got. Yeah, you're doing all right, mate. Yeah. You're doing and, I'm, all right. and I'm getting kickbacks from all the girls that have asked me to get Jack Watts on my show. Thank you very much, Wattsy. That's been absolutely brilliant, mate. See you soon, brother. Been a pleasure, mate. Been a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>